Hey people, Fernando doing another video for more survivalists analyzing the recent speech from Vladimir Putin in Russia. Uh, more lies, I mean a, a pathological liar, no shame whatsoever, but just lying to people to their faces. Not a whole lot worth analyzing here, more of the same. A couple points that I think are worthy of mention and you know, giving a little bit more thought. Um, but yeah, two hour long uh, State of the Union kind of speech. Uh, he's addressing mostly his own country, his own audience. This is mostly for them. So there's something to keep in mind regarding that. He's not addressing so much the rest of the world, which he knows do not believe a single word he says. We are not suffering the Putin dictatorship ourselves in Russia. That's what the Russian people are going through. But those people that are deprived of information from the West, that's who he's mostly addressing. So what he says is, well, there it goes. I want to say again. It was them who unleashed the war. I mean, the man is saying with a straight face that it was the West that unleashed the force in Ukraine. It was not him who invaded already in 2014. No, it was not him. It was not the West that allowed him to get away with annexing Crimea almost a decade ago and annexing eastern territories without any repercussions. Almost a decade ago, the West allowed him to do that. No, no, no. This is a war entirely caused by the West. It's actually the opposite. If there's anything that Western nations, NATO, United States, Europe are... Uh, to be blamed for is looking the other way when this lunatic, when this dictator decided to go with one of the more blatant land grabs in recent history. He was allowed to get away with stealing territory in this time and age and he was not satiated with that. He wanted more. Something that even for many of us, we thought he wouldn't be that stupid to go that far forcing people into reacting, forcing the rest of Europe having no other choice but stopping the advance from a man taking over, you know, nations from the east towards the west. No, he is shameless enough to say that this is all to be blamed on the west. And we use, we're using our forces to stop it. Anyway, but he's talking to that audience. He's talking to his own people. And some people will eventually believe that. I mean, many of the Russians that you know have an opinion uh, favorable to Putin, they will say that, yeah, he had no choice. He had to invade and liberate Ukraine. So that's one of the... And there, there's the Wagner guy, a guy that's taking criminals and throwing them into the, the front line. So they're fomenting the Ukrainian conflict, escalation, number of deaths. Lies entirely on the Western elites. Of course it does. And of course, the current regime in Kiev. This guy, he is so butthurt. He thought he would just roll his tank straight into Kiev and that little Zelensky guy would take off like the rest of the minions that he was used to operating with and yeah, he just held his ground, he had the support of the Ukrainian people and there he is even now. And that is something that screwed up his plans. He was not used to dealing with people that actually, you know, said, yeah, no, we're holding our ground, we're not giving up our country, we're fighting for it. Ukrainian people are essentially strangers. Really? Are, are these the same strangers that are fighting, you know, with tooth and nail to defend their country? Because that's something no one can question. There's no doubt, doubt whatsoever that Ukrainians are fighting like mad. Every single uh, objective viewer that goes into Ukraine, the first thing they, they say is, the support here is overwhelming. These people are 100% sure that they want nothing to do with Russia and they will fight, give up their lives to defend it. It has brought them together even more than before. Suspending participation in the nuclear treaty with the U.S., that is the only thing worthy of mention, even though for all practical purposes it was already the case. He was not allowing any of the inspections and procedures that were already agreed to. Not much of a surprise. The man has no word, no honor whatsoever. And this is interesting. The West can't be silly people. 
So he's, you know, that's an, an interesting choice of words, as if you can't be silly, as if we are silly, but we shouldn't be anymore. That is the way in which people like this man think. These old KGB guard, you know, commies, you know, Russian commies, they think that Westerners are stupid, that our values are silly, that our ideas of not having a, a strong man dictator means that we're weak. They don't see freedom and liberty, our core values, as something that is a strength. No, that's a weakness in the eyes of communist dictators like Vladimir Putin. They want to deliver a strategic defeat while crawling into our strategic nuclear objectives. No one wants anything to do with Russia other than you getting your ass out of Ukraine and in your country where you should not be. Yeah, that's the only thing. Again, addressing his audience the people of, of uh, Russia because he knows that every word he says you know, has no effect on, on the West or the people of the West. He knows that we, we can tell what he is, but the people that are trapped in Russia, yeah, a lot of those will for it. Putting also claims that Western sanctions hadn't defeat <laughs> Russia's economy. This is... This is, this is interesting because he usually says the opposite of what he truly means. He often says the exact opposite of what's really happening. So when he says that it, it was the West that forced him to invade Ukraine or that it was the West that even started the war, even though we know for a fact, we've been seeing it for over a decade, that it was him who started the war, he says the opposite of what is true. So when he says that Western sanctions hadn't defeated Russia's economy, it is actually probably the opposite. It's not nearly as fast as we were told it would be, and no one believed that for a second, and they still operate. Most of the West still operates on some of the more financially beneficial agreements that they have with Gazprom and Russia, the state-owned Russian energy company. That is still ongoing. But many of the sanctions have hurt the, 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 the country a whole lot more than many of these people thought. They thought that they would be selling uh, gas to Europe forever, and that is not holding on. In fact, prices of energy, of fuel, are going down in Europe even before the you know, latest, uh, this last year when, when they fully invaded the country. So all of that has not gone his way. And when he says that it's not hurting, it's because they're hurting. And in fact, it will be very much like it happened with other countries that have been stigmatized and become a pariah for the West. The case of, of, um, of Venezuela, the case of Cuba. Russia will end up being, yet again, the shithole that it used to be. The shithole that it was back after the, the collapse of the Soviet Union, that it was just a disaster. Little by little, the West said, you know, let's look the other way in spite of their little dictator and let's just allow them to integrate into the West. That's why they started traveling, commercing and doing business with the West, with Europe at a, at a level that had not been seen before. Now, all of this has now changed. They don't have that access anymore, and this is impacting them in ways that few people, I think, fully understand. They think that things are just as always in Russia. No. And these things will get worse and worse as time goes by. You will become a large fucking Cuba in Russia. That's what you're looking at. A uh, backward shithole country that is, you know, the, away from everything else. The West has, and he's playing the victim. You know, he again, he's addressing his own audience. He's addressing the Russian people. It's not us that started a war and invaded a, a, a neighboring country. No, no, it's the West that hates us and they turn against us. He mentions the economy again. That is stinging, man. That is hurting. And it's hurting because. People will only take so much from him, especially when they had gotten used to the, the good life, you know, almost being like a, a Western country in many ways. 
you know, and copying it, and they love it. They like the idea of, of using the same clothes, the same fashion, having the same kind of furniture, being more of a Western country. Even Russians themselves like that, especially the younger, better educated Russians. They love that. Those are the first ones that left when all of this went to hell, when they left by hundreds of thousands. They will not, they will not, of course, it repeats that. <laughs> right, and, and, and he, yet again, third time mentioning the sanctions, that they are hurting themselves more. So the way in which he you know, appeases some of this is, yeah, if you're suffering, you know, my, my comrade, my fellow comrade, if you're suffering, just, you know, take, uh, you know, um, enjoy the idea that they're suffering even more. All of those countries that have sanctioned you, those have horrible inflation and horrible uh, fuel prices, and they cannot even have, uh, they are lacking food and everything is terrible. That's what the, he uh, wants Russians to think. And they tell their citizens, Russia. well, there's, there's actually, there's, there's a little bit of truth in that in terms of how, especially the United States, the invasion from Russia is being used as the excuse for the inflation that was mostly caused by the two years of destruction of small and medium-sized business, blaming it all on the pandemic. It was the perfect scapegoat back then, and now they're throwing the, the Putin price hike, like Joe Biden said. Yeah, that is actually bullshit. But the idea that the rest of the world, that the West is suffering, the, 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 the financial... Um, the, the crippling financial measures against uh, Russia more themselves than Russia is, that is, you know, just bullshit, that's not true. Russia will respond to challenges, and we're, yeah, we are big and united. Oh, of course you are, your ability of not even being able to know where you have your own uniforms, you don't have the weapons, you don't have shit, and yet you're confident. Yeah, confidence is great. Sometimes it's misplaced, but good for you, man. Anyway, prepare because we're still going. This war, let me tell you right now how this is going to go. This is going to go for years. You will see Russia bleed itself to death like it did before, self-harm yet again because of their own idiotic imperialistic ambition and this bullshit that the... Russian people are in many ways to blame for. It is not the rest of the world that had this little asshole as their, you know, a dictator in office. It is Russia. And just like Argentina has to take responsibility for whatever president lands in office, and the same goes for the United States and every other country, this Russia, this is on you, man. You know, no one else forced you to have this guy there. Prepare, because we are looking at very interesting times. For that, I strongly recommend surviving survival skills and surviving the economic collapse. And based on everything we're seeing these days, you want to get bugging out and relocating and covering the aspect of Honestly, for real, moving around, bugging out if necessary, relocating if it's the right thing to do, all of these things, we're getting into that big boy territory where all of the survival bullshit, uh, we're looking at times in which you may have to apply many of the real, uh, the reality-based uh, approach that I have in terms of preparedness for a lot of people that is simply becoming the way it is. See you on the next one, take care.